Merriam-Webster defines time as the measured or measurable period during which an action, process, or condition exists or continues. An action in which we all partake during these measured periods is eating. Of course, eating food is a requirement for survival. However, it's much more than that. Sharing a meal with our friends and family allows for times of bonding. We are what we eat. We also are where we eat, how we eat, and with whom we eat, according to Catherine C. Twist. Looking at first dates, this is true, and the aspect that they are notorious for grabbing a cup of coffee or sharing a meal with someone. Time allows for eating with others, however, time also restricts this. It's easy to take time for granted, assuming there will be a next time. Unfortunately, we don't always know the last time we'll get to share a meal or cook with someone. Trust me, I've experienced this firsthand. Thanksgiving is a paramount holiday in my family, as it is across many American households. Mervyn Claxton in Culture, Food, and Identity writes, The fact that American families eat together as a family much less often than those in Europe is reflected in the difference in family solidarity in the two cultures. My family breaks this stereotype, especially on the fourth Thursday of November, as we can be seen gathered hand in hand enforcing our solidarity. In Food by Adrian Lerher, it is stated that all cultures, moreover, have a discrete set of table rituals and manners that are inculcated into the members of the culture from birth. My family has our own rituals as we bow our heads, close our eyes, and my grandfather leads us in a blessing. Amen. We all say in unison, and as we raise our heads and open our eyes, we gaze upon a turkey surrounded by an ample amount of side dishes. Suddenly, I see it. The corn pudding waltzing its way around the table. Now, corn pudding does not involve slopping some vanilla pudding into a bowl and sprinkling some corn kernels on top. No, it possesses a souffle-like fluffy texture with a sweet cornbread flavor and corn kernels bursting in your mouth like little popping balloons. Scooping a spoonful into my mouth, I reminisce to only a few hours prior. My great aunt Shirley had recently been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, however, she still wanted to help out with the Thanksgiving feast. And what other way to help than making our infamous corn pudding? Of course she couldn't do it alone, so I eagerly jumped on the opportunity. Standing at the stove, we can pine the butter, egg, sour cream, cornbread mix, and corn into the dish. While waiting for our concoction to bake, we sipped coffee as we watched the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on TV. Corn pudding baking in the oven, the unique and delicious scent filled our nostrils. Unfortunately, this was the last Thanksgiving Aunt Shirley was well enough to bake for and attend, as her medical condition deteriorated. Baking that corn pudding with her and sipping her coffee is definitely my favorite Thanksgiving memory, and my family continues to make corn pudding for all of our gatherings. It has a different connotation for me, though, as the dish not only reminds me of her, but the bonding we had that Thanksgiving. Thomas Foster writes in Nice to Eat With You Acts of Communion, the act of taking food into our bodies is so personal that we really only want to do it with people we're very comfortable with. I can definitely relate to this, as the majority of my family gatherings include sitting around the table together and hanging out with my friends usually involves a quick stop to grab some coffee. Flashing back to the first Thanksgiving, one of the dishes served was corn. According to Indians.org, when Europeans first came to the Americas, Native American Indians gave the Europeans corn seed and taught them how to grow corn. Native Americans sharing their corn with the pilgrims on the first Thanksgiving portrays their efforts to bond, of course, over nothing else but food. I now know not to take for granted the time I spend at the table, whether it's with my family, my friends, or someone I'm meeting for the first time, as I can't rely on the intangible next time, but rather cherish the time I do have with them.